Filmmaking for a lot of people comes from a desire to tell stories. And while that's partially true for me, I more have an obsession with light and colors. But the truth is, most of us have amazing tools in our pockets. And that's why I really love developing this series where we do deep dives into what these cameras are truly capable of. In 2020, we saw a lot of awesome phones. But in this video is about what I believe to be the top two smartphone cameras of 2020. Because with both the iPhone 12 Pro Max and the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, you can make amazing things. And speaking of amazing things, huge thanks to our sponsor, Bscrip. If you want to learn more about how to win one of their brand new anamorphic lenses we'll be featuring in this video, keep watching to learn more details. With that out of the way, let's dive right in. Now I'm sure most of you know how things work around here on this channel, but just in case you're new, this is not your average type of phone comparison review. Quite frankly, I don't care about 99% of what phones have to offer. And so sure, while I think it's cool that the new iPhone is squared edges and has a magnet on the back, and no, I don't really care that the Note 20 Ultra has a high refresh screen or built-in pencil. But if you're interested in the camera and pushing it to the complete max and getting the most out of it, this is definitely the video for you. All right, so let's talk the stock camera apps. First, let's go with the simple one, iPhone. Pretty much hasn't changed its software features for video in quite a few years, unless you count the ability to tap to change your resolution and frame rate. That's a pretty pro camera feature, wouldn't you say? Oh, and I guess you do have grid pro feature number two. And yeah, the only way to change exposure, of course, uh, everyone knows this is the good old tap and hold to auto exposure, auto lock. It's a good thing we have third-party apps we'll talk about later. Moving on to the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra's stock camera app. Here, things get significantly better. Now, for the sake of this video, when I say stock camera app, everything we talk about is going to be in pro mode since this video is about pushing these cameras and using them in the most professional way possible. And in here, you get a bunch of settings. Yes, you can change the ISO, the shutter speed, go to autofocus, manual focus controls. Of course, you can change your resolution, your aspect ratio, your frame rates, and even has a nice little histogram button, which I oh so appreciate. If you go into the settings, you can have some advanced features depending on what resolution frame rate settings you're choosing. So if you're willing to step back from 8K, go all the way down to 4K, then you can get HDR10, which is going to be the nice 10-bit color, which is going to be a little bit closer to the Dolby Vision on the iPhone. So that's the features of the stock apps, but how does that translate into an actual final image? Because on paper so far, the Note 20 Ultra is definitely the superior, more pro camera than the iPhone is. But oh, the Apple debate of sneakiness is their ability to create something that is so simplified that you as the end user don't have a lot of options, yet it always gives you such a pleasing product. And that's exactly what I found using the 12 Pro Max. I mean, the Dolby Vision, of course, we've made a bunch of videos on the past couple months. It's fantastic. The flexibility you have in post, even though you're not meant to edit Dolby Vision beyond that, is amazing. And I've made an entire video on color grading Dolby Vision if you want to check it out, card above. But also the dynamic range on this phone is just absurd. A lot of these scenarios, especially when I was in the woods, um, it was a very bright sky with very shadowy woods and tree lines, and I never really had to think about it with the iPhone. We're gonna talk more about these rigs in a couple minutes here, but anytime I had just the phone by itself, threw on the B-Script anamorphic, threw on the depth of field adapter with a cinema lens attached to it, I never had to think about it too much. It pretty much just always came out nicely exposed. And then the Samsung. When you get your settings right, 
this phone without a doubt can capture amazing quality video. But that's kind of the key is getting everything right. And even if you get your settings right, you still have to make compromises. A very shadow tree line where it's backlit by the sun and bright sky pretty much gives you a silhouetted tree line with an exposed sky. If you expose for just the ground, you're gonna blow out your highlights and the sky is gonna be just bright white and very much not look cinematic at all. Now the most frustrating and hardest part about the Note 20 Ultra to me is the 8K sensor. Listen, it's clearly a marketing, not gimmick or scheme, like it technically is 8K. And in my initial review, I talk about how good it can look and that is still true. And if you notice any shots like this one where I shoot in 4K, it's a little wider, but then if I go to 8K, it has a heavy crop to it. In my head, it should be reversed where 8K should be wider and then 4K is cropped in. Moving on. Now let's talk about that 8K in comparison to 4K. Should you shoot on 8K in comparison to doing the 4K HDR 10 mode? Again, I kind of agree with all the other um, online review sites saying no. Because here's the thing is these cameras are shooting at relatively low bit rates. So if you were to zoom in four or six times, you technically may get a little bit more sharpness in there, but again, also these phones are doing post-processing, their own sharpening, their own denoising. And so to me, it doesn't look that much better. I'd rather have the better color bit depth because there's a way bigger difference um, that you'll notice between shooting an 8-bit color and 10-bit and having that flexibility in post to color grade a little bit more. Um, and get more of a stylized look without breaking the image. All right, so let's talk low light. See, both the iPhone 12 Pro Max and the Note 20 Ultra have larger than average phone sensors, and people automatically equate to bigger sensors being better in low light, which generally is true. However, remember before how I was talking about 108 megapixels? That means you have 108 million pixels packed into the relatively same size amount of surface area as the sensor on the iPhone, which has 12 million pixels. When you have less pixels on a surface area, that means each uh, pixel photo site is bigger. It means that each photo site can capture more light, more color data, uh, faster without needing as much light. And so what you can see is that the iPhone holds up in low light pretty decently. I think it definitely fares better than on the Samsung. They almost try to hide the amount of noise it would have by doing their own denoising and then actually upping the contrast, making it a punchier image, which makes the blacks like really crushed blacks. And just for a fun little experiment here, but I'm gonna turn off whatever color grid I have turned on. Hello, this is the raw footage coming from my Pocket 6K. Now, just for comparison, I'm at 400 ISO. You shouldn't really see any noise. Now, if I grab the Note 20 Ultra, 4K mode, so it's a little wider. I'm gonna go to 400 ISO and 150th over shutter speed, so that way I can match the proper settings. Hello, Note 20 Ultra. This is how that's looking. How about the shadows? Look down there a little bit. Okay, so see, it's not super noisy because it's very punchy. It's very high contrast. All right, let me do the same thing with my iPhone. Do the same thing. Hopefully the autofocus gets me. I can see I'm in composition at least. Let's look down. Shadows over there. Boom. Hello, iPhone. Let's see if the skin tones are any better. There, there's literally no debating which one looks better. I will say when I pan away that it does like the crunchy skin thing as well because it's exposing for the shadows. But when you compose for yourself, it understands that that's skin tone. So it's not over, but from what we've seen so far, the Dolby Vision on the new iPhone is just really impressive. Another thing that's really impressive is the new sensor shift stabilization on the iPhone. When I went to grab these wood shots, I actually brought my Osmo Mobile, um, but I, apparently I forgot to charge the battery, so I had to film everything handheld. And as you can see from this comparison clip here, um, I think it's safe to say that the iPhone is definitely more stable than the Samsung's. It's not bad but it's definitely better. All right, so now I think it's time to step things up a notch 
and start rigging these things to be a little bit more ready for a more film set. All right guys, so as I mentioned, Beast Grip is the sponsor of today's video. Huge shout out to them. And they sent out a whole bunch of products that I've been using throughout this video. So if you're an iPhone user, can't recommend enough the Beast Cage here. This thing is 100% solid metal. There are some pretty good cases and cages out there for phones, but none I have ever used have felt like this and everything's completely customizable. So currently you are looking at the iPhone 11 Pro model. They have them all the way back to the iPhone 7 and SE series and the iPhone 12 line is coming by the end of next month. Now let's say you're not an iPhone user, they still got you covered with their Beast Grip Pro. Now this is made out of a very strong plastic and this thing is crazy customizable. Again, this can fit pretty much any phone out there. They've got their Pro Series ND filter line all the way from ND4 to ND64. And even without the lenses, you can pick up the 37 to 58 millimeter filter mount. That way you can just put on a ND without needing a lens. So this little guy is awesome. This is their wide angle lens, which the reason you may wanna pick this up is if you're like me and you have something like the 12 Pro Max, you could still use your main sensor, throw this guy on. And this is actually designed and manufactured by Kenko Tokina, which makes some incredible lenses as well. And of course, no matter what lens you're using, you want a really good piece of software to go along with good hardware. And so you should check out the Beast Cam app available for iPhone only. In here, you'll be able to de-squeeze your anamorphic lens, uh, turn on the depth of field to flip back the proper rotation of the image. And also, you know, one of my favorite talking points is bitrate for video, and you can go all the way up to beast mode, which is gonna give you 160 megabits per second. And lastly, the star of today's show, this is their brand new 1.55X anamorphic lens. It's finally available now, and you can pick it up in the affiliate link down in the description below. A couple notable things about it is like I said before, it has filter rings on it. This is gonna give you a more subtle anamorphic look, but still have a lot of the characteristics that genuine cinema anamorphic lenses will give you on a real camera. Now Beast Grip actually has decided to give away one of these lenses and either Beast Grip Pro or Beast Cage depending on whichever phone you have and want to use with it. All right so here's how you enter to win the anamorphic lens. It's real simple make sure that you are subscribed to my channel as well as Beast Grip TV and leave a comment down below telling us why you'd want this lens and what sort of product Project you would be excited to use it on. In one week from this video going live, we will pick a winner to win that awesome combo. So good luck to everyone. Thanks again to Bscript for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the comparison. Now, quick disclaimer before we go forward with these test results is while Bscript loved my enthusiasm for experimentation, they did want me to mention that the 12 Pro Max and the Note 20 Ultra are two phones that have not been um, specifically calibrated for these existing products that I'm testing out here today. So if you have one of these phones or are getting one of these phones, the 12 specific cases are coming out next month, or you can take a look at my hacks and see what the final results look like and form your own opinion as to how it looks. All right, so first up, let's talk about this anamorphic lens. This anamorphic lens in my testing has a very subtle flare. You really have to get the right um, lighting source in order to get the really like fully across the screen flare. Most of the time you'll get a very nice kind of light halation or um, just a little streak or hint of that blue purple light. All anamorphic lenses have a huge distortion and this one being a 1.55x is a very widescreen view. This is a 2.76 aspect ratio. Most of the time when you see people do widescreen here on YouTube, it's like 239. And this is 2.76, this is ultra Panavision. And so on the edges, you are going to see that kind of barrel distortion. That is supposed to be there. It is not supposed to be straight lines. One last thing about the anamorphic lens is Bscript definitely recommends turning the stabilization off if you're doing a very slow moving or stationary, you can get away for, with some stabilization turned on, but if you do it too much, you'll definitely get some of that warpy feel. So it is recommended to turn that off. Now, obviously to utilize the anamorphic while shooting, 
you're going to need something to de-squeeze the image because anamorphic images automatically are squeezed. I highly recommend downloading the Beast Cam app. The colors and the sharpness that you get from this app, I think, look really good. And now onto our final experiment, the DOF adapter. Now, if you guys saw my using the iPhone 12 Pro Max as a cinema camera video, you know that I use the DOF adapter and things came out very soft. I could not get it to focus for whatever reason. Now, this beautiful commenter right here who actually has the DOF adapter and the 12 Pro Max um, basically did his own experimenting and found this awesome little macro lens um, kit that you can get for like 10 or 15 bucks on Amazon. So now that we have the little hack put together, time to see if it actually gives good results. But again, in terms of the actual phones, I was finding the same problems uh, with the Note 20 Ultra that I was before, where if I wanted to expose for the buildings and the shadowed areas, I'd have to choose that, which would then blow out the sky or expose for the sky and basically get really dark shadowed areas or possibly even silhouetted. But when I just threw my iPhone on this rig, everything just was exposed properly. It looked great. Straight up looks like it came from a mirrorless or DSLR camera. I am super impressed with this little $10 hack that allows the 12 Pro Max to work. And by the way, if you have any other iPhone besides the 12 Pro Max, the 12 Pro, 12 Mini, 11, all the way down to whatever, you don't need this focus adapter for it to work. The DOF adapter just works out of the box great. To me, this is game changer. Like when I make these videos using X phone, like a cinema camera, the thing that usually is missing is real depth of field. Alrighty, final thoughts. Like it's been a couple months since I had the Note 20 Ultra in hand, but I remember when I made the video on it that I was constantly impressed. And granted, I was comparing it to my 10s Max at the time, and I hadn't even tried like the Sony Xperia 2 or Google Pixel phones, and it still is a really good camera, don't get me wrong. I love the amount of options you have in shooting modes, but there's no clear winner as like, this is what you should be shooting in because they boast about 8K video, but then you're stuck with 8-bit color, not to mention a major crop in on your image. And so 4K HDR10 seems like the way to go, but then it's like, I want 8K. And I don't know, it's like they added all the right features and settings. They just didn't make the combinations right. And to me, that just says, hey, we wanted to be able to put 8K HDR10 and whatever other features on a poster board because this phone has all of them. Meanwhile, the iPhone, which frustrates the heck out of me for its lack of pro software features that allow me to change things without using a third-party app like Beastcam, it's one of those things where I hate to throw out the Steve Jobs line, don't crucify me in the comments, but it just works. Any rig that I attach it to or stand alone by itself gorgeous but hey this channel is a democracy what do you guys think about these two phones which one do you think won in my tests have you used them which one do you prefer in your daily use and i'm just curious out of all the beast grip products i showed off which one is your favorite would you rather have the dof adapter would you have rather have the anamorphic lens remember you have one week to enter the giveaway for the anamorphic lens and don't forget to comment down below why you think you should win and what you would use the anamorphic lens for. And if this video brought you any value, don't forget to click that little thumbs up button. Huge thanks again to Bscript for sponsoring this video and just being an awesome partner in all of this and helping me experiment and really try to push these videos and elevate them so that I can push mobile filmmaking further. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.